This video is going to concentrate on the essential question, how can you determine the end behavior of a function and identify any horizontal asymptotes? And you'll see when we figure out the end behavior of a function, that will pretty much determine already for us any horizontal asymptotes. It's almost two for the price of one. If you've never heard the phrase end behavior before, what it means is end behavior is a description of a function's y values. I'll try and do that a little better. A function's y values off the left and right edges of a graph. In other words, it's what's happening to the function, specifically the y values of a function, what's happening to the function values, the y values, beyond what we can see in a graph, beyond what we can see um, in whatever viewing window we're looking at in a graph and uh, it's a prediction or or a description of what we think is going to happen and, and, and it won't just be a guess it will, it will actually be able to calculate end behavior we'll be able to observe from a graph what it is um, but but that's it's looking beyond what we can see particularly as X goes uh, as we look left and as we look right so there's actually two types of end behavior left end behavior and right end behavior now let's look at this first equation, this first function that I have here, uh, f of x equals uh, x squared plus x minus 3 divided by the quantity x plus 1. I've given you the graph so you see what it looks like. Uh, there's certain things about this graph that you might recognize like a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative 1, but what we're interested in is if we trace this function to the left, in other words, if we're watching this function off the edge of the screen to the left, and if we trace the part of the function that goes off the edge of the screen to the right, we want to make a prediction as to what's going to happen if we keep going beyond what we can see. What are the y values going to be doing? So we have, um, uh, we can, you, can, you can probably anticipate what, based on the picture of the graph, what the end behavior is going to look like, but I want to look at this algebraically. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to what I call generalize. The function. And by generalize, what I mean is for the, for the examples of the functions that we're going to be looking at, this is going to work for the time being. And that is when you have a numerator of x squared plus x plus 3, we're going to keep x squared and we're essentially going to get rid of everything else. And here's why. As x gets really, really, really positive or really, really, really negative off the edges of the screen, this x squared term is going to grow really, really, really rapidly in comparison to this positive x, this plus x minus 3. That's going to grow really, really slowly, and this x squared is going to dominate the value of the numerator. Likewise, the x in the denominator we're going to keep, and we're going to get rid of the plus 1. And so the, the, this f of x, this generalizes to simply x squared on top and x on the bottom. We keep the term with the highest exponent. And an x squared divided by x reduces, again, to just x over 1. And so what that does now is it takes a, a complicated function like f of x, it generalizes it to a much simpler function, in our case, just x over 1. Now this graph, or, or just x, now this graph doesn't look anything like y equals x. You know what that straight line looks like. But it's going to behave like y equals x if we look really, really far to the left and really, really far to the right. Now, I mentioned two types of end behavior, so let's look at, let's look at left end behavior, and we're going to look at right end behavior. And the, the left end behavior, the way that we describe it, and this is the way that we write end behavior. We're going to do the 
it's going to look like LIM, which stands for limit. The limit, if we're going to the left, that means our x values are approaching negative infinity. Right? The further left we go, these x values here, if you think about it on the graph, are getting more and more and more negative, heading in the direction of negative infinity. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of our function is the way that we set up end behavior. This tells us we want to know what are the y values as x approaches negative infinity. As we go left, what are the y values of our function becoming? Well, f of x, we've, we've, we've generalized. So this answer, rather than doing the complicated function f of x, we're going to do the same exact limit, but instead of a complicated f of x, we've already reduced this to x over 1 by generalizing. Well, what happens to x as it gets more and more negative? Well, the answer is it gets more and more negative. X, if, if x is approaching negative infinity, x over 1 is approaching negative infinity. And you can kind of see that down here in the direction that our graph is going off the edge of the screen to the left. It's going down further and further and further and further down. Same idea, only to the right. What's going to change? Well, we want the limit as x approaches. Well, if we're heading right, now we're going to positive infinity of our function. And we've generalized our function, so we can do think of this as the limit as x approaches positive infinity of simply the expression x over 1. Well, again, what happens to x over 1? The more and more positive x gets. The more that x approaches infinity, x over 1 is going to approach infinity. And you can picture that off the edge of your screen to the right. You can see how this portion is approaching a y value of infinity. It's going up forever. So we generalize by keeping the term with the highest exponent on the top, the term with the highest exponent on the bottom, simplify to generalize the function, and then we analyze what happens as x gets really negative, what happens when x gets really positive. So this is, this is the first of three examples that for the time being is going to encompass all types of end behavior problems you're going to see. So the first is left end behavior is equal to negative infinity, and the right end behavior is going to equal positive infinity. Let's look at another example. Actually, before we do that, one thing that I want to mention while I still have the, um, this screen up is when your end behavior is infinity or positive infinity or negative infinity, either of the infinities, you can see that the, the graph behaves like diagonally. Right, if we look at its behavior, it's behaving diagonally. And diagonal behavior results in this function having no horizontal asymptotes. We've seen vertical asymptotes as, as this sort of an imaginary straight vertical line that we can put in between these, these portions of the graph. And with a, with a diagonally behaving function off the edges of our screen, its end behavior positive or negative infinity, this is an example of a function that has no horizontal asymptotes. So we determine the end behavior first. We get our answers for end behavior. And then those answers inform our decision about horizontal asymptotes. Now let's look at another example. Again, we start out by generalizing. right? So generalize. And when we generalize this, this function f of x, what are we going to keep on the top and what are we going to keep on the bottom? Well, we're going to keep this 3x squared. That's the term with the highest exponent on the top and cancel out the rest. We're going to keep x squared on the bottom, cancel out the rest. And this f of x simplifies, it generalizes to 3x squared over x squared. Well, 3x squared over x squared can reduce to simply 3. The x squareds cancel out. And so um, this, this function, although it's not the equation, f of x equals 3, when we analyze its behavior off the edge of the screen to the left and to the right, the generalizing tells us that this is going to act a lot like the function y equals 3. Okay, That almost gives away the end behavior already because watch what happens when we do our left and our right end behavior. So we're going to do left and right end behavior. 
We're going to use limits again, just like we did before. We always use limits to describe the end behavior. So the left end behavior is going to be the limit as x approaches negative infinity of our function. And we said we can, instead of thinking about the entire function as complicated as it is, we've now generalized and we've reduced this to the, the expression 3. So analyzing the left end behavior of the function f of x is the same as analyzing the function 3. And since there's no x in our expression 3, it doesn't matter that x is approaching negative infinity at all. The limit as x approaches anything of 3 is 3. And likewise, you can anticipate what's going to look like on the right side as x approaches infinity of our function. We're going to look at the limit as x approaches infinity of the expression 3. And again, that's just 3 because there's no x in the expression whatsoever. And looking at the graph that, that I've given you, you can see a imaginary sort of horizontal line here. And it's no big surprise what the value of that horizontal line is, right? Where does it cross the y-axis at 3? This end behavior, this, this reducing or this generalizing, having an answer of 3, tells us that this function has a horizontal asymptote. That's the dotted line that I drew horizontally. And that horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 3. In other words, if we, if we track this function off the edge of the screen to the left, its y values are approaching a y value of 3. If we track this function off the edge of the screen to the right, its y values are approaching a y value of 3. That's what we're communicating with the end behavior and with a horizontal asymptote. Okay, last example. Again, we're going to generalize. And what are we going to keep on the top and what are we going to keep on the bottom? Well, this is going to be just an x on the top. We're going to get rid of the plus 3. We're going to keep x squared on the bottom, get rid of the plus 1. So x over x squared is what we keep. Well, how does that reduce? That reduces to 1 over x. We can divide out an x on the top and the bottom. You'll notice the first example, there was an x on the top, x over 1. Second example, all the x is canceled out, and we had just a, a number, a constant, 3. In this third example, x is canceled out, and the x is on the bottom. So those are the three cases. Most of the examples we're going to look at are going to be one of those three cases, and you're going to know what the end behavior is for each of those three cases when we're done with this video. So let's analyze the end behavior. We're going to look to the left. And we're going to look to the right. And we're going to write our limits. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of our function. We're not going to think about the complicated function. We're going to think of this as the generalized function, which is simply 1 over x. And what happens to a, a, to a fraction like 1 over x, the bigger and bigger and bigger x gets, or the more and more negative x gets. Well, if your denominator, 1 over your denominator, gets really, 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 really big, even big negatively, this is going to become closer and closer and closer to a value of 0. Think about 1 tenth, 1 or, or, or 1 one hundredth, 1 over 1,000, 1 over 1 million, 1 over 1 billion. Those are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller, tinier and tinier and tinier fractions and decimals, practically nothing. The further you go, the bigger your denominator gets, you're getting practically nothing. And so that's why this equals 0. Well, the right end behavior is just like it, only with a, with a positive denominator. And so whether your, your denominator is positive or whether your denominator is negative, 1 over x is going to approach 0. It's just going to approach it from the dif the, a different side of 0. So let's look at the the graph that I've given you, the picture of the graph. If we go to the left, you can see our graph crosses the x-axis. It's now below the x-axis, and it's flattening out and approaching 0 from underneath. So the answers are negative. The y values are negative, but they're flattening out, getting closer to 0 from below. Off the edge of the screen to the right, 
this function is approaching the x-axis. Its y values are approaching zero just from the positive side. So they're positive y values, but getting smaller and smaller and smaller closer to zero. So the end behavior for this function is zero on both sides. Well, what happens then if you have zero as your end behavior? You're going to take a look at this, and you're going to say, okay, there is, an, there is a horizontal asymptote. And if the end behavior is zero, that horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Try that again, y equals zero. And you can see it. Here's this. It's the, it's the x-axis in this case is your horizontal asymptote. Off the edges of the screen to the right and the left, this function gets closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. And that's your horizontal asymptote. So you've got no horizontal asymptote if the graph is slanted off the edges of the screen, like the first example. You've got a horizontal asymptote at some number like 3 if the x's cancel out when you generalize. And in this case, if x is in the denominator when you generalize, you've got a horizontal asymptote y equals 0.